on April 3rd, 2014, Price House, where we also and strategic communications efforts around the world. as a speech writer for Secretaries of State, Moni Han, in 19... We have, like Sana quite rightly said, moved into a new era, a new political landscape, uh, a landscape that talks about moving away from divergence and uh, talking about political convergence. When we talk about political convergence, I think it is very, um, it's a very timely uh, period uh, to move towards reconciliation. Uh, it gave me immense hope listening to the president on independence, his independence speech, spoke about bringing together the minds of the people in the North and the South. He spoke about coexistence and uh, national understanding and um, it seemed as if he was very committed, sincere and dedicated into moving towards national reconciliation. Now this is the kind of speech that we should have been hearing in the last six years because I, I strongly believe that the last government had a golden opportunity to put things right after the war uh, and it became a lost opportunity and uh, the present President His Excellency Maitri Pagasiri Sena very timely in his independent speech. Uh, he spoke about reconciliation and uh, quite right, even after speaking about reconciliation, sometimes leaders speak about things, but do they actually move towards action? And he did, just a couple of days ago, on the uh, 23rd of last month. Uh, His Excellency the President, the Honorable Prime Minister, together the former President, was in uh, Jaffna, handing over some of the lands that belonged to the people, which was an area that was of much concern to the people in the north and the east. Subsequently, the Prime Minister on the 27th went to Jaffna and I was part of that delegation. Um, I, of course, was part of the delegation simply because I was very uh, enthusiastic about delivering uh, some of the 100 day programs that came under my subject, my purview. When I spoke to the um, Prime Minister, about doing the launch of the pregnant mother's uh, nutritional program. Uh, it was like a foregone conclusion that uh, we do the inaugural uh, program in Polonarva simply because it's the hometown and the home state of His Excellency the President. But uh, the second program, the Prime Minister was very, very, very uh, insistent on being done in Chattanooga. So we made it. Uh, to Jaffna on the 26th, and I was there for four days. The Prime Minister was there for three days, and I would like to just give you uh, um, a recap of some of the key areas in where the Prime Minister um, took on some of the subjects that were very, very uh, close to the hearts of the people. Uh, I must say, this should have been done many, many years ago. The then governing body should have been up in the north, looking into the grievances of people, looking into the needs of people, and being truly sincere in bringing about absolute national reconciliation uh, in this post-war situation. But uh, I, it reminded me of the former president, uh, His Excellency Ramasinghe Premadasa. I remember when he was president, he had these presidential mobile uh, sessions in different uh, districts, going into the uh, districts, uh, setting up office in the district just for the weekend or sometimes just for a day or two. And he would, you know, interact with the public and uh, look into their needs, grievances, etc., uh, etc. Et it was a very similar thing that the Prime Minister did. Prime Minister went into uh, Jaffna on the 27th and from the time he landed, it was a never ending series of uh, interactions and meetings with people. Uh, I must say the first meeting was of course he did the usual temple visits and uh, the first actual interaction with the public was meeting almost 800 pregnant mothers and delivering uh, the promises we had made uh, to be delivered within 100 days the 20,000 rupee nutritional package. Uh, soon after that the Prime Minister uh, met up with some of the key people 
in the divisional secretary in the GA's office. And at this meeting, one of the primary objectives of the Prime Minister was to address the issues with regards to female headed households. And I must say, to my amazement, uh, the Prime Minister, at least some of the notes that I took down when I was there, he appointed a National Centre for Women uh, Headed Households. And this National Centre would be uh, placed, established in Kirinochi, because Kirinochi has the greater number of female headed households. And for that reason, he decided that he was going to have a National Centre uh, with regards to all female headed households, north south but the center would be established uh, in Kirinochi. And furthermore, he also uh, appointed a committee to look into the needs, the grievances, and the, the solutions. And that committee would be headed by uh, Mrs. Shanti Abhinayan Singh. Abhinayan Singh, I'm sorry. Uh, she would be the chairperson and two representatives from the Women's Ministry, one representative from my ministry, one representative from the Ministry of Health, uh, two representatives from the Ministry of Child uh, uh, Provincial Council, two from the women's organizations, and women's organizations in the north, I know some of you are here uh, right now, and uh, an attorney at um, all. Um, he also directed the, uh, he directed some, he, he appointed some subcommittees headed by the district secretary, additional director, secretary of each district and the Northern Provincial um, Council. So he wanted the local bodies, the local authorities to get involved in, uh, you know, with the uh, committee headed by Abhimanya Singh uh, and the secretariat. So I think this is something that we have been looking forward to. And this is an area where all women can band together from the south and the north and uh, work towards national reconciliation, which would be uh, something that is that we are all talking about and looking forward to. Apart from that, he um, he spoke about a lot of other things, the issues with regards to the fisher folk. Uh, he gave orders to write off 50% of the loans that they had taken because they went through so much hardship. He spoke about you know, protecting their territory, giving them uh, strong equipment to be in the industry. Um, these, are, these are some of the issues that we talked about, spoken about. He spoke about uh, some of the land issues. He spoke about many issues. And one of the uh, key things that uh, stuck in my heart was where he promised to have a national youth festival, uh, a sports festival, next year in 2016. Now the reason to uh, have it in 2016 is so that we could rebuild the grounds and the facilities and the infrastructure to have this sports festival. I think this would be a, a good opportunity for us to you know, integrate and interact with the people from the south and the north and um, to mend uh, relationships. Uh, and to have a healing of souls and hearts, uh, which is a much needed thing. There were many, many areas in where the Prime Minister took prompt action, appointed committees, looked into some of the grievances, gave relief immediately, but the things that really touched my heart was the women and also talking about the youth. Now, during my visit, I was not, even though I was there when the Prime Minister was there, I went on my own, doing my own thing. Uh, not doing my own thing actually. Uh, there are some subjects that come under my purview as the Minister of Child Affairs, State Minister of Child Affairs, Child Probation, uh, the Child, uh, Early Childhood Development, and the Child Secretariat, and uh, Protection. I uh, had the good fortune, I would say it's a good fortune, of interacting with some of the ex combatants. We had a whole day's program training and uh, you know, uh, trying to get them to integrate into society and to be trainers. Um, in this program, I had uh, a few minutes to interact with them, and there was a question and answer. I gave them time to uh, speak out and you know, tell me uh, of their issues and problems. I was sad and I was um, put to shame that I could not interact with my brothers and sisters in the north, simply because I didn't have the, uh, the I, I couldn't speak the language. And uh, that made me feel so bad because I understand Tamil, but I cannot speak Tamil. 
I don't understand it to the extent of you know, listening to a speech and trying to you know, uh, grasp uh, what the, the content of the speech, but uh, I could, you know, a few words here and there I could really understand, but I can't speak the language, so I was very apologetic uh, telling people that I'm sorry the next time I come, I will somehow at least learn a few words where I can speak a few words in uh, Tamil. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I felt really bad about, and meeting the ex-combatants, Something that I felt was that um, there is a lot of suspicion, there is a lot of, uh, they're not very forthcoming in, coming out with their feelings, uh, they're very reserved. Uh, what I felt was I felt the sentiments of them feeling that, okay, who are you? What are you doing here? Are you really, really sincere? Because in the last uh, six years, this is the kind of feeling that they have obviously had, that they, they do not trust uh, some of the people who come there from the uh, south to actually reach out and help. So I was wondering, and in fact my probation commissioner was with me, I was, I was asking her, uh, let them speak out, get people that they feel comfortable with to speak to them and get um, you know, their ideas, what they need. But the few that spoke out, there were some young men who said, you know, our education was dropped off us. If they were taken into the one year, obviously they were very young there was no formal education. And today we are finding it very difficult because we have absolutely no livelihood trainings, livelihood programs, and we don't know what to do. And there is one boy says, I have just done an electrical course, but I don't have the means of you know, going and doing it even on a private uh, level because I don't have the toolkits. You know, can you provide me with the toolkits? And the women, when I spoke to the ex-combat and the women, all they said was, you know, livelihood programs. When we spoke to the female head households, uh, all they spoke about was, security for the kids, sanitation in certain places. I went to Bhopal, there was huge issues with regards to road construction, sanitation, uh, and safety for their children, and livelihood issues, because the vast number of female-headed households are placed, 50,000 female-headed households are in the north. Uh, you know, one in every third household in this country is headed by a woman, but the vast majority in the north and the east, and if the women in the north and the east are saying that they do not have formal, and this is an area where the Prime Minister was very prompt, and that is probably why he wanted this committee appointed and a secretary in the centre uh, for female headed households in Kininuchi. Um, so these are, these are little things. I know I went and I opened a, a child friendly space in Gopai, then I opened a, a preschool in Kininuchi. Uh, even the preschools, I was able to spend 10 million from our ministry and open the preschool for teachers. It was an issue. Uh, so they were saying, they were asking me whether I could provide them with the teachers. And of course, yes, I had uh, uh, good friends who are working on the ground, uh, who are very passionate about helping people, uh, like World Vision, Save the Lanka. And these people voluntarily uh, would offer their services and also maintenance of the that I handed over to the uh, GS department. After doing my independent rounds and meeting with the people, finding out the grievances, I took uh, some of these problems to the Prime Minister one evening, and the Prime Minister, when I said about the ex-combatants and their uh, sentiments, their feelings, he said immediately, give me a report, give me, give me a proposal to see how I could you know, help them. And uh, uh, Jaffna, uh, governor was there. He seems to be very sincere and passionate. He said, "Rosie, you're spot on." Uh, I think you know we need to do either you know livelihood training programs or vocational training programs for these people. Look and design and see what we could do. So there's a lot of immediate um, need for immediate action. And I think you who are here right now, some of you are faces that I see day in day out, who are passionate about. Uh, interest in women's issues, so you have a lot to do. I think you need to look at exactly uh, what the Prime Minister did and what he promised, and you know the committees and uh, the uh, you know action that he took, so that you could do a follow-up. Because one action that he took was also he um, decided to appoint 400 new uh, police officers, and out of the 400, 200 would be WPCs, women police officers, because. The, some of the grievances were where the female headed households, when they had issues, they could not go and report in the police station simply because of lack of uh, the language and the understanding. So there will be 200 WPCs, and on top of that, he spoke on education. He took firm action with regards to education, and he also uh, wanted the education ministry, together with the uh, resettlement ministry, 
to push a cabinet paper to employ teachers, uh, binding them for 10 years because it's a national issue and of great concern. So immediate action was taken with regards to some of the grave uh, areas in which the previous government had failed to fulfill and I'm sure these things will be uh, taken forward and since we are so passionate about you know moving forward and especially with the female headed um, the center for female headed households and the committee that is appointed uh, I think we have uh, a lot of hope for the future and I know some of you who are here right now uh, are people who are actually working on the ground with regards to this I must thank and commend Ms. Laka Dharmadasa for the many efforts uh, Ms. Laka has put in to bring us together, take us around to uh, help us to integrate and interact with the people in the north and uh, put in, you know, dialogues and uh, conferences, seminars, uh, sessions like this, Ms. Laka. Uh, my congratulations to you, your efforts, we will see dividends beyond our expectations in the near future. Uh, while saying all that, um, I would also like to urge all of you uh, to be part of this program in, uh, you know, uh, reconciliation. And uh, like the prior president said, His Excellency the President said in his independent speech, we need to bring the minds of the people in the South and the North together and co coexistence and uh, national understanding is what we need to look at. Thank you very much.